Hello guys and welcome to my Mazda X8 channel. In today's video, I want to share some things uh, about my Mazda X8. Uh, first of all, I want to show you uh, some video clips of me trying to start this car. And uh, this was uh, early in the morning before I had to leave for the entire day. And then what I discovered, or should I say my son discovered, my nine-year-old son came up to me and he's like, hey dad, your alternator pulley is not spinning. And I'm like, well, that's good to know. Um, I think there was a good chance that other things was not spinning as well and maybe they gotten I loose. I had many experiences when I'm working on cars um, and they have been sitting for a while. This does not have to do with Mazda X8, but this is pretty much has to do with any other car out there. Um, one time I had uh, my Mercedes Sprinter was sitting for a couple years and an alternator free froze up on that one as well, that alternator pulley. And when I tried cranking it over, it actually was cranking over very, very slowly. And that thing has uh, like an H8 battery, I believe like 900 cranking amps or more. Um, and as I was cranking it, smoke was coming out of the starter. And then at the same time, uh, my wires uh, was really, really getting heated up. So same thing was happening with this car guys um there was smoke coming from the starter there was wires heating up because um the battery and the you know all the cranking amps was working overtime trying to get so, it started i guess I'll let this video be a lesson uh to all of us including myself to first check if things are rotating and to first check if the car is actually getting fuel from the actual source and not like i just showed you the video where you could imagine all of this time that I was cranking it and I had no idea that the fuel line at the actual source at the fuel pump was actually leaking which wasn't safe and the only reason I was actually able to smell it is because I had my doors open if I would have had my doors closed there's no way I would have smelled it because that uh, metal lid creates a very good tight seal um, around where the fuel pump is and probably for a good reason, uh, because if those things ever leak, and imagine you smoke in a car, well, that car could go up in flames really soon. So here's a little clip of me trying to get this car started. Um, the takeaway from this will be is, even though the alternator is locked up, look how fast the starter is spinning right now. And that's an old starter. By the way, speaking of new starter, I believe it's gonna come in tomorrow. It says Saturday and really should have taken it like days longer. Uh, already a crankshaft position sensor came in. So I have that one new, even though a new one is currently installed from my mo other Monster X8. All right guys, the car has been sitting all night. Let's try to crank it. I'm gonna first crank it over with a foot down and gas. And starting to release. Right, guys once again this was with the alternator pulley locked up and please keep in mind each of those cuts that I was cranking I did actually wait one minute before cranking it over again it's just it it's all together and um, it seems like I did not wait but that's what I've been doing it's a good idea to crank it away at about 10 seconds of cranking and then one minute of pausing in some cases it's better when you're cranking about four to six seconds waiting about a minute that's gonna save you starter even more hey guys as, as i'm rotating my son came up and he was observing this engine and he says my alternator is not rotating so let's take a look i will be right watch <laughs> Yes, not spinning. The alternator wasn't 
Thank you for noticing that, son. I appreciate it. Okay, let's spray this. Make sure it's in the right direction. This bottle's about over. So guys, I spend a lot of time and I actually try to basically get the alternator um, unstuck, the alternator pulley, let's just say, and I sprayed a couple different uh, things. I sprayed some twister on it. Uh, it is Zep twister. That stuff usually works the best. I was uh, just about out and um, just ordered myself a whole box of it, like I think like 12 cans. But anyways, I also had some PB blaster and I sprayed some of that. And I'm trying to spray behind the pulley. That way I could actually get things loose. Uh, you really don't want to spray it on the belt because that might just cause the belt to slip off. But now let's try cranking it away with me actually having that pulley loose or somewhat loose. And this is the result. Let's try this again with the alternate loose. again then I'm gonna give it a rest as you can see guys it is spinning so much faster uh, the very first time I tried cranking it over after taking some time, obviously it spun really fast. Uh, and after actually doing a couple of those tries, I walked around and it uh, turns out that the battery was being charged just like a normal 6 amp uh, type of uh, charge cycle, anywhere from 2 to 6 amp charge. Um, and just to get some confusion out of the way, um, I am using a proper... Uh, battery size I do have uh, as much as 800 uh, cold cranking amp type of battery I believe right now I'm using 750 and 750 cold cranking amps I really need to look at it it doesn't really matter but I'm using the exact battery that is recommended uh, to be used in the this size Mazda X8 engine um, I do have what the one that is 800 it is not fully charged I really need to get that one charged but right now I'm just using I think couple 700s so i get those batteries charged up overnight and on top of that i have um, a couple little options i'm at home so i basically rolled out like one of those uh battery uh jump packs with um a charge situation where you could charge from two to six amps charge at 40 amps and then you could uh start the car like engine start which gives it 200 amps and uh, when I say giving it 200 amps or not, that's exactly kind of like what I mean. So it's 200 amps on top of what the battery is actually capable of. And uh, I believe this somewhat keeps the battery alive a little bit longer. It still will drain it because it takes so much extra power uh, when you're actually spinning a starter. So basically, I hope that explains it. So, um everything's happening kind of today and i'm really sorry of like just uploading way too many videos but the reason i'm actually doing that because i could see a lot of you guys man you guys got my back you guys are always in the comment section uh trying to help me out you're looking at things and uh you're probably curious kind of like what's going on and you know what i don't want to keep you waiting you know i don't want to like just upload like one video per day because a lot of things are happening in the same day and uh i'm sure you're as curious as i am uh, and I just don't want to leave you hanging. This is why, like, everything that's going on, I'm uploading it just to, you know, so we're all on the same page. Those of us that's uh, keeping an eye on this, like, little project of mine. So, what's next uh, for tomorrow's video? So, right now, it is actually late again. It seems like every day I have to work late uh, because today was family time and I took my family out to a theme park for all day. We have a really nice theme park here in Charlotte. It is uh, called Carowinds. Um, it's a theme park and it's nice. 
and I have three kids and um, I needed to spend some time with them. So, you know, and I enjoyed it with my wife as well. So, um, well, as soon as I came back uh, right now, I'm finishing up this video and uh, I'm heading out there. Um, firstly, I want to try starting a car. Like I'm going to give it like a couple spins depending on how things go. And then I want to deflood it because I'm thinking, look, it's been sitting all day. I mean, could it still be flooded? Guys, write in the comments below. Can a car be flooded for like, you know, if you left it like flooded for six hours, can it still be flooded? Uh, let me know in the comments below. So what I want to do is uh, I'm just going to try to give it a few starts. Uh, if it doesn't start, um, I'm going to um, unplug my, uh, my fuel pump. I'm just going to unplug it and keep spinning uh, my starter until I basically deflood the whole vehicle um, with my gas pedal you know, also down. But I think at this point kind of defeats the purpose because I went to the source and I just disconnected um, you know, the power to the fuel pump. And uh, at the same time, um, you don't have to disconnect the power to the fuel pump. You could just simply go uh, to the fuse panel box, uh, which is under the hood, very easy, and disconnect the blue um, relay for the for the fuel pump. And uh, that should be accomplishing exactly the same thing. Um, you know, or you could just simply uh, put the gas pedal down, which is probably not familiar to many of us. It wasn't a familiar thing uh, with me. But it seems like when you push the gas pedal down, it actually deflots it uh, in this type of situ situation. And I've known this for a while, uh, but I always appreciate when people point it out. It really makes it seem to me that a lot of guys in our state community, you guys really know what you're talking about. And you're really helpful with that because uh, new Mazda state owners, they're not going to really know that, that you could just simply press down on the gas pedal at the same time when you're cranking it and do it about five seven times and you know for about 10 seconds each time and you could just deflate the car so what i'm thinking to do uh in the next video is um i'm going to try and as i deflate it um i'm just going to explain to you guys like what i do and i'm just going to do it and i'm not going to bore you with all the cranking uh, of me deflating it i'll just do it like one time but in reality i'm going to do it up to seven times and um, the only stuff that I'm going to actually record is the portion when I'm actually cranking the car over because I think that one has the most importance because these are the type of uh, situations where you could catch something. You know, you might hear something, smell something, or, you know, take something away from that. And I think that's what's really important. This is why I'm recording those things um, because uh, it would be important to me if I was like an uh, observer how are those cranks going? How fast those cranks, you know, cranking and uh, seeing the improvement overall. And uh, I'm sure you could see that we are starting to see improvements even in the cranking uh, of the starter, even though nothing else has changed. Uh, there's a lot of things that I'm noticing. <clears throat> now, another thing I do want to point out uh, is that uh, we're now you know, to the point where we have a very few things that need to get done in order for me to get to get this car started. So tonight, if I don't get this car started, um, then tomorrow I'm gonna pull off all the, all the um, ignition coils and uh, I'm just gonna put like on time lapse when I'm doing it because I already have a, a ignition coil installation video on my channel and uh, I'll replace all the ignition coils with the ones uh, from my other car. Uh, and then um, when I actually when I actually um, replace them, at least I'm gonna know. Okay, those ignition coils work, and uh, we could just you know keep it at that. And uh, next, what I'm thinking is there's a good possibility that my um, catalytic converter is very 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 clogged. This has 150,000 miles. I'm pretty sure it's really clogged because my other Mazda says which only had 129,000 miles um it was actually clogged and kind of like messed up because when i removed it and i shook it it's rattling on the inside so there's loose pieces in it so that thing was like super clogged and after i actually just removed it and put a mid pipe the car was starting so much easier because it could now finally breathe um and another thing that i want to explain 
I found some rodent poop inside of one of my uh, pipes. Um, you know, like I'm talking about kind of like where the tips are. I don't know if that's rodent poop or whatever, but it kind of looks like it. So there's a good good chance this car was sitting for two years and there was a nest that was built on the inside. So that's also a possibility that things are just clogged up. And I've seen that happen before in one of the diesel vans that I had to deal with. There was like literally some kind of nest because that thing was parked in a field and then maybe some mice have found a good location to maybe make a nest instead of the pipe. Who knows? Maybe even something else. Maybe one could have died in there. You know, you just never know. But um, anyways, guys, uh, I'm going to look in into all of those things and... Um, I think we're on the right track and uh, we're, we're very close in order to getting this car started. But anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you uh, so much for liking and commenting my videos and uh, also subscribing. Um, I do want to grow this Mazda X8 community. Uh, I'm going to be here for a while trying to help you guys out. I enjoy these cars, so I'm going to keep, you know, messing with them. Um, after I get done with this Mazda X8, I would like to buy myself another one as a project and just keep going. You know, I really enjoy it. I have many plans uh, for the future uh, when it comes to those. But anyways, guys, subscribe if you haven't already uh, to watch those other videos. And uh, let me know in the comments below what would you guys like to see. So anyways, guys, stay tuned for the next video tomorrow. Bye-bye.